welcome back travelers i hope that you had a wonderful holiday celebration whatever it is that you celebrate on this time on the last journal entry i said that i wanted to go three days without complaining i wanted to start right away but erica and i celebrated our birthdays and our anniversary and i wanted to wait till after to get started with this project but once i got started i realized quickly that stopping that thing inside of us that makes us complain is a lot harder than i thought i learned a lot about habits and i realized that once you practice something for a long period of time it is difficult to get rid of that pattern i try to make it easy for myself by committing to three days i didn't commit to seven or 30 days like most channels do but even these three days were challenging and seemed impossible to do all right, so day one was a disaster because I kept catching myself complaining about things that I didn't necessarily need to be complaining about. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt discouraged almost within the first hour of trying this. I realized that this was already a bad habit that I had developed and it wasn't going anywhere soon. So I needed to tackle this differently. In his book, Atomic Habits, which by the way is not sponsoring this video, James Clear points out that there are four levels to a habit. The first is the cue, the thing that triggers the habit. Then it's craving, which is the thing that you desire out of that habit. The third is response, which is the thing that you actually do, the habit itself. And finally, the reward, which is what you're getting out of it. And so I realized that if I want to stop complaining and I want to change this habit, there are a lot of questions that I need to answer. The first is, what do I get out of complaining? Why do I complain? What do I have to complain about? So I spent the first day just watching myself, literally just observing my complaining. And the first pattern that I noticed is that I complain a lot about things that should be easy, but are made difficult by other people. For example, a trip to the grocery store should be an easy thing. I get in my car, I drive there, I find a parking spot, I park, I get out of my car, go into the market, grab what I need, pay for it, put the groceries in the car, get back into my car, drive back home, take the groceries out and be done, right? Should be a simple mission. But here's what actually happens. I go to my car, I turn it on, I'm about to back up out of my driveway when I realize I forgot my wallet. So I have to turn it off, go back inside the house, grab my wallet. Then I go back into the car, I back out and I start driving. And then there's a driver to my right side who suddenly remembers that he needs to make a left turn on the next light so he floors it and then without using his turn signal, cuts across two lanes, almost causing an accident. So I spend the next two minutes complaining to myself about what a horrible driver that guy was and how he almost caused an accident. Driving to the store should not be this hard. But wait, there's more. I get to the store, I find a parking spot, and I'm about to go into the spot when I notice that there are three carts left there by other customers. So I have to get out of my car, move those carts, and then park. Parking should not be that difficult. I go into the store, I need help finding something, so I need to look for an associate to help me out, and there's no one to be found. Finally, I find someone, and they have the ugliest attitude in the planet. And I'm not going to mention what store it is in case somebody from Walmart is watching. I don't want anyone to get offended. I get everything I need. I go to the cash registers. Usually, I look for the shortest line, but I find that sometimes the shortest line isn't necessarily the fastest line. So I get in line for the register that I think is going to be the fastest. I wait a few minutes, and then that dreaded blinking register light goes off because the cashier needs a manager to approve or cancel something and I wait longer checking out should not be this difficult I cash out put myself in the car and make my way home but not before running into some other crazy driver I kick off my shoes and I'm back home where it's safe <laughs> And then there's things like editing this video, a task that should take me about an hour, hour and a half at the most, takes me about three to four hours because I have a mouse and keyboard that doesn't sync up to the computer and I have a dozen other interruptions that happen in between. So I'm speaking for myself here and the thing that I notice is that I complain the most about things that should be easy but are made difficult by other things or other people. All right, so what do I do with that information? I answer that by asking one simple question. How is this a good thing? The guy who cut across two lanes, how is that a good thing? Well, it's making me a more observant and safe driver, right? How is people not returning their carts a good thing? Well, I get to be patient and understanding that there are people like that in this world. How is an associate's bad attitude a good thing. Well, it's teaching me to be more kind to people and that if I don't like my job, I should probably work somewhere else. How is the cashier needing help from a manager a good thing? Well, it teaches me to be patient with people who need help because I was once a beginner at something and I needed people to be patient with me. And you get the point. So on day two, I spent it not just catching myself when I would complain, but turning it into a positive. So here's what my habit of complaining looked like according to James Clear's four levels of a habit. The driver who cut across two lanes is obviously the cue. It's what triggered my complaining. The craving is my desire to have a good and safe driving experience where 
other drivers signal and merge safely. I want others to abide by the rules of the road. The response is the complaining itself. My complaining about how horrible that driver is and the terrible decisions that he made on the road. The reward, the thing that I get out of complaining about that terrible driver is knowing that in comparison to that driver, I am a good driver. I feel good about driving safe. I feel good about following the rules of the road. So why do I complain? Because I want things to be easy and to run smoothly like they're supposed to. It makes me feel good about the fact that I'm a good driver, that I signal and I merge safely. But this experience reminds me of one of my favorite Bruce Lee quotes, which says, do not pray for an easy life, but instead pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. And that made me think, I can't control other drivers. I can't control other shoppers. I can't control associates or cashiers. I can only control myself. Complaining is my weakness because I just want life to be easy. What I shouldn't want life to be easy. What I should want is to have the tools necessary to endure a difficult one. The other thing that I did to help myself out was apply the two minute rule. You see, sometimes when I'm editing, I'm interrupted to do something else. And I find myself complaining because I have to stop doing what I'm doing, take care of that, and then come back. So I ask myself, is this thing going to take longer than two minutes? And if the answer is no, then I'll just go do it. It's a two minute break. And then I can come back and edit. If what I need to do takes longer than two minutes, then I give myself two minutes of uninterrupted editing and then I go and take care of that. And then I see that as a break from editing. Just those two tools alone have made a huge difference in changing that habit. I feel less tension in my stomach. I feel less tightness in my throat. I feel more relaxed and it's actually helping me be a little bit more productive. By day three, I surrendered to the idea that life comes with challenges and the only way to stop complaining is to replace the thoughts of the unfairness in the world with gratitude for the wonderful things that the Great Spirit has given to me in my life. On day three, I changed my attitude of complaining to the attitude of gratitude and being grateful changed everything. I'm curious to know, did you try not to complain for three days? If you did and you learned something from it, please let me know what you learned in the comment section down below. In the next few journal entries, I want to talk to you all about things like the attitude of gratitude and how that changes things. If you got any value from today's entry, please help me out by hitting that like button. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy this content and it shares it with a lot more people. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your journey. I pray that the Great Spirit walks with you in your journey and fills you with his peace and his love. And I'll see you on your next adventure. Peace.